Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Pwede ba palakpakan natin minsan pa ang ating Panginoon? I know you're excited to hear and listen with the Word of God. And before that, pwede bang tumingin ka sa katabi mo? I know, sabihin mo sa kanya, I know you're blessed. Siklik, li, siksik, liglig at umaapaw. <laughs> and I'm here for you. Sabihin mo sa kanya, I'm here for you. Artihan mo ng konti, I'm here for ya. <laughs> Hallelujah. So blessed today. I'm about to deliver the Word of God. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, last week po, we ended up our series entitled Ship Strong. And today, we're going to continue that series after our camp. And we're calling this Ship Stronger, of course. Ship and then Stronger, right? And uh, I know you mga nakatan po ng camp dito, bless na bless. At uh, you are, you know, you are enabled to to share it to the people na uh, hindi po nakadalo, unfortunately. But I believe next year, sila po yung makakapunta at makakasama natin. Amen. Pwede bin tap- tapikin mo yung katabi mo. Bless na bless ako ngayon. Kaya ibe-bless kita. It's time for me to bless you. I would like to congratulate the whole church. Thank you so much for praying for us. And thank you for praying for our ministry. Patuloy po tayong pinagpapala ng Panginoon. Bless na bless. Hindi po nagkulang ang ating uh, finances. So, uh, hindi naman sobra, just enough lang, you know, just enough. And praise God dahil uh, na, 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 napagpala po tayo ng Panginoon. And of course, as we open this a series, post-camp series, uh, Ship Stronger, let me introduce to you uh, by this message by telling you this statement. It says here by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, one of my favorite authors, sabi niya, the church is only the church when it exists for others. The church is only the church when it exists for others. Oh, that's true. Because we exist for others, really. And when we talk about existing for others, it's a sign of humility. Ako po ay nag-aaral bilang, sa pagpapastor ko, nag-aaral ako every day, every Sunday before I deliver the message, alright, for you. I don't study for myself. I study for other people. Wala po dito na teacher ka at gagawa ka ng curriculum mapping mo or lessons mo at sasabihin mo sa sarili mo, I'm going to do my curriculum mapping. I'm going to do my lessons for myself. You do the lessons for other people because you exist as a teacher for other people sa, sa mga estudyante mo. Meron ba dito na dentista ka? Ako bilang dentista, nag-aaral ako para bunutan ko ang sarili ko. Meron bang ganun, Dok? You exist for other people. And our, especially sa atin po bilang mga Kristiyano, you are longing to be deep so that you want it to be wide. Hindi ka nagsasabi dito na gusto kong maging malalim sa Panginoon para yun lang, close lang kami ni Lord. No, you want to be deep sa relationship mo sa Panginoon kasi gusto mong gamitin ka ng Panginoon sa ibang tao. And this church, I believe, we are existing and we exist for other People, if you will enter marriage, for sure, sasabihin mo sa asawa mo, mom, uh, uh, mommy, or honey, um, gusto ko talaga na magkaroon tayo ng limang babies. Si Joshua Jr., or kung sino man yung mapapangasawa niya, si uh, JD the second, the third, I don't know. Because marriage is, of course, loving uh, shall be uh, one flesh, but also it's a procreation. Diba? Gusto mo magbuo ng family nila. Gusto ko lang mag-asawa kasi wala, ligaw, ligawan ko lang siya everyday. No. You want to build a family because you exist for other people. And I believe we are going deeper because we want to go wider. We exist for other people. Jesus trained His disciples not for themselves alone, but for others. I believe ang Panginoon, si Jesus, trinay niya yung mga disciples niya hindi para Uy, gra- grabe ano yung lesson natin kanina? One by one, salvation. O, turo mo sa akin, sa atin lang to ha. Huwag natin sabihin, secret lang to. Kasi pag nalaman nila, baka kopya yun ng iba. No! It meant to be broadcast. It meant to be preached. 
the gospel na tinuro ng Panginoon. That's why after three and a half years, Jesus ascended to heaven, and then after they received the, the power of the Holy Spirit, they were empowered, they were equipped, they were, you know, they were encouraged to preach the gospel, and these 12 uncommon disciples became I mean, these this, this, this disciples who are common, naging uncommon sila to preach the gospel. Bakit? Trinain tayo ng Panginoon, binilt ang church para mag-exist sa ibang tao. We've seen the great shepherd. We've known him. And we're continually knowing him. And second week ng ating series was the sheep. We were, stu- we were stupid. We're susceptible. That's why we wanted to be shepherded by the great shepherd who is Jesus. And last week we talked about the flock. I believe Jesus called us to gather as one church because two or three gathered. Nadun ang Panginoon, I believe. And dahil binuotay ng Panginoon as one flock, we became a church. And church needs to go out and reach the others. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, I'm here to reach the others. So our title for this message is the church and the others. The church and the others. Alam niyo po, sa tuwing lumalabas ang simbahan, nagkakaroon at nagmumultiply ng panibagong simbahan. Dito sa church ng Bethany, we went to CIT, meron tayong church doon. Because church is not a building, it's a group of people. Yes. Two or three, that's considered as a church. We went to EC, we had our, we ha- we're having our D groups. Sila Sir RJ, dalawang RJ yan, Sir John. May D group kami sila, Kuya Jebby and CJ. And then, empowers si Sir RJ. And then, lumabas, pumunta sa EC, nagkakaroon tayo ng church ngayon doon. Pansin nyo to, ang church tuwing lumalabas, nagpuproduce ng church. Because obedience produces Christians. Obedience produces church. At ngayon, titignan natin yung ugali at yung style at yung movement ng first or early Christianity. At gusto kong tumayo kayo lahat and we're going to read Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. Please all rise as reverence to God's word. This is the fellowship of the believers. If you have your Bible, open it with you. Verse 42 through 47. It says here, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe, sabi nyo nga awe, came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles and all who believed were together and had all things in common and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need and day by day each day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, a, day by day, each day, those who were being saved. Close your eyes. God, thank you for bringing us here all together, Lord. And we believe we're here because you brought, you brought us here, God, for a reason. And that is to know you and to know each other. Because we believe every time na kami po'y nagsasama-sama ay may nangyayaring miracle. May nangyayaring fellowship, God. And Lord, we are transferring the goodness. We're transferring your teachings to one another. That's why, God, thank you for bringing us here together. As we talk about your word, kayo po ang mangusap sa amin. And after this, mas magiging mat lakas na simbahan kami, Panginoon, dito sa simbahan ng Bethany, mas magiging malakas kami dahil aabot kami ng ibang tao. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may now be seated. Now, I want you to get the background. We were talking about flock, 
sheep, the great shepherd. This time, si Jesus, he ascended already to heaven. Sinabi niya yung great commission, which is in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, go and make this out of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, teach them what you have observed, and behold, I'm always with you. So, etong time na to, they have already received the power of the Holy Spirit. So, sabi ng Panginoon, dyan kayo sa upper room, all right, Jesus, and they, they were praying, they were talking, they were, you know, reminiscing the goodness of Jesus, and then after 10 days, the Holy Spirit came in their midst. And after that, nagkaroon na ng Pentecost. Pentecost means uh, 50 days. Pente means 50. So 50 days, they received the Holy Spirit, and they preached the gospel boldly. This time, sobrang saya na nila. Alam niyo yun, yung after the camp, tapos sobrang saya nila, tala, preach natin, abutin na natin. I believe, nagkaroon ng camp, hindi lang para i-express sa sarili natin at sa bawat isa na nag-attend sa camp. But it has to be expressed to other people so that the word of the Lord will be heard. Amen? So, this time, makikita ninyo, there are several pronouns about togetherness. Sabi nyo nga, togetherness. They, their, them, themselves. Yun yung pronoun na ginamit dito at sobrang daming ginamit. It's all about togetherness. And twice binanggit dito yung each day and day by day at babalikan natin yun mamaya. Now, we're going to look at this afternoon, what does a growing flock and church look like? What does a growing flock and church look like? Paano natin masasabi ng isang simbahan ay lumalago? And I want you to know this, walang simbahan na mature pa na. We are, or we are continually maturing. Kasi pag nag-mature na tayo, hindi na natin kailangan si Jesus. Pag mature na, grabe church na yan, mature na yan. So ibig sabihin, hindi natin kailangan si Jesus? No. Every day, we need Jesus. So we are a growing church. We're not a grown church. Because every day, we are growing. Pero anong itsura, anong picture, anong image ng isang church na lumalago at ng isang flock na lumalago? Number one is this, based sa binasa natin, we are devoting and they are devoting to the apostles' teaching. Now, I want you to get this picture. Some of you here, you heard this, Pastor. Abang binabasa ko na to. Actually, na-preach ko na to eh. Alam ko na to by heart. But some of you here, maybe you're still wondering, ano ibig sabihin ng devoting to the apostles teaching or devoted to the apostles teaching? I want you to write this down. The apostles teaching were the teachings of Jesus. I want you to get the context and the background of this passage. Luke is the author of this book, Acts. Ang nagsulat ng Acts ay hindi si Paul. Ang nagsulat ng Acts ay si Luke. And kung makikita natin dito, Luke wasn't present in the first day of the Jerusalem church. Pero makikita natin dito why he ended up writing a large chunk of the New Testament by relying on what? Letters, documents, at sa mga eyewitnesses during that time. So, Makikita natin dito, hindi naman kasama si Luke sa mga disciples. Hindi siya kasama dun sa, 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 sa first church ng Jerusalem. Pero bakit nakapagsulat siya ng account? At meron siyang sariling gospel ni Jesus. In fact, in Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, in the introduction to Acts, Luke refers to his gospel. Look, look at this. In my first book, I told you, Ano yung first book na sinulat ni Dr. Luke? The first book he had written was the book of Luke. Now he is about to write another book which is the Acts of the Apostles or yung tinatawag nating Acts. And here's the thing. Sabi niya dito, Theopilus. So he was writing this maybe for Theopilus, maybe his, his disciple or maybe a new convert about everything Jesus began to do and teach. Sabi niya, 
Theopolis, sabi ko naman sa'yo, di ba? Tinuro ko na sa'yo eh. Paano nag-start si Jesus? At paano nga kami tinuruan? At ito pa. Until the day He was taking up to heaven. Ibig sabihin, nasubaybayan ni Luke at alam ni Luke at nasulat ni Luke lahat ng nangyari kay Jesus mula sa pagkapanganak, Luke chapter 2, pagkapanganak, pag may ministry, at pag ascend niya sa heaven. Now, here's the thing. Paano niya nasulat lahat yun? Paano niya na-record lahat yun? You know what? Through apostles' teachings. Paano niya nalaman yung one by one? Paano niya nalaman yung next generation? Paano niya nalaman na kailangan natin mag-pray? Paano niya nalaman na kailangan natin magpa-disciple? Because somebody taught you na may nagturo dyan, na nagturo dyan, na nagturo at pinasa, pasa, 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 pasa. And that is what we call apostles' teaching. We are not teaching na hindi related kay Jesus. We're not teaching, pag sinabi natin, sa natin natutunan na we have to protect one another. Sa natin natutunan na we have to love one another. Sa pastor mo. Itong pastor mo, may pastor dati yan. Yung pastor mo, hanggang doon sa disciples, matetrace mo, hanggang papunta kay Jesus. There, are next, there is next generation because somebody taught your leader at yung nagturo sa leader mo at sa pastor hanggang, hanggang sa kaduluduluhan. I believe, look, was able to write all the accounts and recorded all the accounts of Jesus because there are witnesses which are the apostles. Sinabi, ito yung nangyari, look. Ito yung nangyari. So the apostles shared their experiences and teaching of Jesus. Hindi lang minemorize o i-memorize nyo ito para may sulat mo, no. One to one. Peter, ano po bang nangyari nung paalis si Jesus? <laughs> Iyak akong sabihin eh. Sa John 21, niyak ako noon. Binekpas kami ni Jesus. Niyak nga ako kasi hindi ko papantayin yung love niya eh. He was able to, you know, to, 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 to share the experiences na meron siya kay Jesus. That's why Luke was able to write his own gospel. You know, even when the first disciples were warned by the Jewish leaders not to speak in the name of Jesus, they refused saying in Acts chapter 4, verse 20, we cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. I want you to get the picture. They are being persecuted this time. Binabato ng kapitbahay. Minumura sa campus. Oof, born again, born again. But they were. We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. Look at that. That's why the teachings of Jesus were able to transfer to the next generation. Because no matter the circumstances are, I'm going to preach the goodness and finished work of Jesus. Nagpapatuloy ang isang katuruan at katotohanan kapag may nagtatransfer. Their teaching was not theoretical or abstract. It was their experience and it was compulsory. I want to give you an example. Ito mga campers dito, nag-attend yan. At ngayon, di ba, may katabi ka, nag-attend ako nung ano, tapos yung kaibigan mo, di nag-attend. Nag-attend ka hindi para ingitin yung mga taong hindi nag-attend. I believe nag-attend kayo para hawaan yung mga taong Unfortunately, hindi nakapag-attend. Grabe ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon. I'm here to stay. Guys, stay tayo no matter what happens. Because there's no a perfect church. We're not a restaurant. One pastor said, the church is not a restaurant. That customers are always right. Because we're here to serve. Do you know that? But I'm not condemning you. I'm encouraging you. Come on, let's stay. Bakit, natin, bakit tayo hinayaan ng Panginoon at inalaw na pumayag yung mga boses natin na mag tayo para umatend sa camp or maybe sa isang seminar para mahawaan yung iba? Hindi ka kasi sumamay. Yan, yan. Buti nga sa'yo. Tignan mo ako. Mainit na ako ngayon. Tignan mo. We're not here para ingitin sila. We're here to encourage the people seated next to you. Sa pastoral team, I am mentoring our pastoral staff, our pastoral team para ituro sa kanilang fams. 
At di ko sa hindi na sasabihin itong tinuro sa amin ni pastor, sa amin lang to, hindi ni kututuro sa. No, the fam has to transfer the teachings from me to their disciples. That is apostles teachings. Here's the thing, gusto nating lumago sila, pero hindi naman natin kinukuwento sa iba. At gusto natin lumago tayo, pero ayaw naman natin magpakwento. Uy, nangyari sa camp. Gusto ko na ano ako, talaga na-excite ako eh. This is what happened. Growth is about, it's not just about learning. It is also passing what you were learning. What you've learned has to be passed. Has to be transferred, has to be preached, has to be taught to other people. So, apostle, ang tunay, na lumalagong simbahan, merong devoting, ibig sabihin ng devoting, I'm devoting myself to listen, at dahil na, napakinggan ko, ipapasa ko. Amen. Amen. Amen? Number two is spending time in fellowship. Spending time in fellowship. Napakababaw. Alam ko, alam nyo na to. Baka alam nyo pang, mas magaling pa kayo mag-preach sa akin dito when it comes to fellowship. But you know, Nakakalungkot dahil ang fellowship nowadays, ang tingin natin dito ay parang na-water down na. Pag-fellowship, community lang naman yan. Pag-fellowship, life together. Pag-fellowship, you know, a group of friends, eating bodies. Pag-fellowship, scalawags lang yan. Or ano lang yan, team, team Jesus lang yan or whatever. No. Na-water down na ang fellowship. Here's the logic. How they did tell the stories about Jesus. It says here, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread. Pa paano nila nalaman yung tungkol kay Jesus? Through what? Through fellowship. So nagkakaroon ng kamalayan na grabe, ang tindi pala ng Panginoon natin, no? Yes, sa nangyayari yun? Through fellowship. So ang fellowship, mga kapatid, hindi lang kainan. Fellowship ay hindi lang po kwentuhan at kapi-kapi tayo, fellowship. No, hindi yun ang fellowship because fellowship in Greek word meaning koinonoya. It means partnership. Literally, nagkikita-kita. And participation. So walang fellowship kung walang participation or social intercourse at hindi yan. Pecuniary benefaction to communicate, communion, contribution, distribution, That is fellowship. Fellowship is something na meron tayong heart to heart. We com- may commu- common union. May common united vision. Kasi doon nangyayari at nariiterate ang ating fellowship. Kaya pansin ninyo sa fellowship natin, Pastor, i-remind ko lang po kayo doon sa series natin. Ay, oo nga pala, no? So, fellowship is not just about eating. It's about reminding the work The will of Jesus in our lives, in our community, in our church. So every time we do com- uh, uh, fellowship, mas lumalago at mas lumalalim tayo sa bawat isa. Yung pag-fellowship, buo yung team. ba? Diba? Kasi ang kala natin, pag-fellowship, pupunta lang ng bagyo. Uh, yun ang malungkod, no? Oh guys, fellowship! Amen. Buo yung team, oh. Pupunta ng bagyo, oh. Oh guys, mentoring! Kalahati, di ba? Bakit ganon? Remember this. Guys, fellowship is actually mentoring. And we're sharing our burdens. Bakit? We, 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 we got to, you know, know everybody's heart. Pastor, ito talaga yung heart ko eh. And then my advice, Pastor, ganito talaga yung gusto kong gawin eh. And then my advice, the biblical, that is fellowship. Remember this, fellowship is the unity of the body of Christ in the Holy Spirit. Now, we should understand fellowship as a verb, meaning it is an activity. Fellowship is forming a deepening relationships in such a way that we help each other keep our commitments to God. Kaya pansin nyo, kapag nag group kayo, that's fellowship. Pero pag pinag-uusapan nyo, oh, kumusta yung campus natin sa Eduardo? Oy, pastor, o oh, nga pala, muntikan ko nang nakalimutan. Nariremind tayo sa calling natin. Oh, pastor, 
Remind ko lang kayo, ang dami na po yata ang ginagawa. Nalilihis na po yata kayo ng last pass to pass. So, oh, dapat ang gawin natin, kapos ministry. We're being reminded. Fellowship is what we do and say that holds us together. Without fellowship, the foundation of the apostles' teaching will crumble. Bakit? Kala kasi po natin, ang fellowship, puro lang, hmm, Papa Birthday, magpapaisikapagete si Pastor, yun ang fellowship. No. Kapag walang, apost- kapag walang fellowship during their time, the, the apostles' teachings will crumble. Bakit hindi na ipapasa? Here's the thing, gusto natin mag-grow, pero ayaw mo naman sumama. Sino dito gusto mag-grow? Ang tanong, sumasama ka ba? I, I'm preaching here two angles. Marami dito gusto mag-grow tayo, pero ayaw naman sumama. Meron dito gusto naman natin mag-grow sila, pero ayaw naman natin silang isama. It's a two-way communication. So fellowship is not just about eating. It's about deepening our relationship so that we're going wide. We will be wide. Marami din kasing fellowship. Sabi dito, fellowship is the unity of the body of Christ in the Holy Spirit. Marami din kasing fellowship na wala sa gitna si Lord. That's not considered as fellowship. Fellowship tayo. Kasi meron naman fellowship, nandun daw si Lord. Pero pinag-uusapan ng ibang tao. Tingin mo ba, nandun ang Holy Spirit? Nandun siguro, pero nag-grieve. Hindi dapat paghiwalay si Lord at ang tao pag may fellowship. Pag ang tao, ang fellowship, pag pinag-uusapan si Lord, dapat walang pinag-uusapan na tao. Meron naman fellowship tayo. Let's talk about myself. Wow. Let's talk about other people. No! When it comes to fellowship, kaya nawa-water down na, Gerald. So pag fellowship, eating-eating, kwento, alam mo ba si, ano, si Doc Joshua, ganito, ang ano niya, ang bawal ng kilikila niya. So we, we talk about other people. But fellowship, we're talking and we're being reminded of Jesus' will. Doon napapasa. That's fellowship. That's the importance of fellowship. Uh, I want you to preach this. CJ, Jared, Doc Josh, JP, Gerald, and Jason, yung samahan natin sa Deep and White United, sobrang lumalalim. Every time na tumatakas kami doon sa camp, nagkakapi kami dito sa baba. At alam mo, napag-uusapan namin yung mga future events. Wow. Ang napag-uusapan na, grabe pastor, grabe. Thank you. Tapos pinagtitimplaan ko sila ng kape. Una, OJT lang si CJ. Tapos, o oh, OJT, ikaw naman magtimpla ngayon. Titimpla naman siya. Tapos si Jared naman ng OJT. Tinitimplaan ka namin. Pero, yung fellowship namin na nagkakape, we're talking about What's next for us? So, fellowship is not just about drinking your coffee. It's not about eating your spaghetti, my favorite. So, we're talking here, what's next for us, man? Because unity is the body of Christ in the Holy Spirit. Wait, guys, fellowship tayo, prayer meeting, gawa tayo ng GC, wala si pastor, pag-usapan natin siya. It's not fellowship. Fellowship dapat nandun si Lord. May tao at nandun si Lord. Minsan may tao pero wala si Lord. Meron nandun naman si Lord pero hindi iniisip ang ibang tao. Magkaibang iniisip ang ibang tao at sa pinag-uusapan ng ibang tao. We have to dichotomize that. And we have to have distinction. Hey, the Lord is here. We will be guarded. That's that's how important fellowship is. Do not water down fellowship. Fellowship tayo, guys. Ano gagawin nyo? Wala lang, tambay-tambay lang, taas-taas pa, aircon-aircon, shoot-shoot dun sa bahay, tapos kape-kape, whatever. It's not fellowship. Fellowship dapat laging kasama ang Panginoon. At laging dapat iniisip ang ministry at ang ibang tao, how can we help these people? You know, the early church met together in one place. That's a, that's a good thing about the first and early Christians. At during that time, they meet sila sa one place in outdoors or maybe in temple area. At gusto kong sabihin sa inyo, ang temple during their time, ang area is katumbas ng 46 football field. Sobrang laki. Pero they're meeting in one place, in one accord. 
They were praying. They were studying. They were discussing religions. They were encouraging one another. At itong malupit, people sold their properties para walang maipag-iwanan sa laylayan. Ganun katindi ang fellowship nila. Pare, meron akong lupa doon sa hektare. Benta natin para hindi naghihirap itong si pareng Joshua natin. Medyo mas mayaman na ako sa kanya. Eh, di ba? So walang naiiwan sa laylayan. Kung papansin ninyo ang acts, walang nangangailangan during that time. Ganun ang fellowship nila. They were thinking of other people. That's humility. That's supernatural. So, hindi ito mamaya magkakape ka. Basta ako, magkakape lang ako. Kaya mo na sila. Mahal nyo ito eh. Pero sila, okay, meron akong extra dito. Tatlo, libre ko yung iba. Walang naiiwan sa laylayan. They also worship in the temple daily. At yung meetings nila sa bahay, to what? To share the Lord's so, uh, Supper. That's why they grew to over 5,000 members. Men, ang tindi. Mega church agad. Tatlong service agad sa Vision 2020. 5,000 men. And look at this in Acts chapter 2, verse 47. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people and each day. Sabi nyo nga, each day. Look at this phrase, each day. Dito sa passage ito, dalawang beses na ulit itong each day or day by day. It means it is a routine. It is a habit. They form a routine. They form a habit of loving one another. Talking about the disciples' teachings. And every day, my fellowship. Kaya ganito katindi ang church noon. Ngayon, pag in-invite mo sa fellowship, oh, fellowship, magbabayad na naman ako dyan sa seniors pam na yan. May ambagan kami. Pusit daw ako. Yung iba, uh, Graham, magbabayad na naman. Wala akong pera. <laughs> Once a month na nga lang, ayaw pa. Paano tayo lalalim, mga kapatid? Pero sila, men, Every day, sa ginawa ng Panginoon, my fellowship. Kaya ganun sila kalalim. Balita ko, wala ka daw pambili ng iPhone. Magtrabaho ka. <laughs> Kala mo bibigyan na. <laughs> but look at that relationship. Kasi may fellowship ang mga ship. The phrase each day was mentioned twice. It, it means the practices here are a routine. And routine creates a habit. And, alam niyo bakit hindi natin mahabit na mamahal ang bawat isa? Walang fellowship. Makikita mo lang once a month. Kabilis pa. Uy. May alikong di. May lakad po ako. May ano sa amin. Paano tayo magkakaroon ng habit ng pagmamahal, JP? Ng forgiveness. Kung walang each day, may habit, may routine. Paano natin mapipreach ang gospel sa ating campuses kung wala tayong habit na pinag-aaralan ng salita ng Panginoon? Each day, hindi Sunday. Hindi nakalagay every Sunday, no. Each day, it's a routine. It's, it's, a, it's a habit. Every day. But here's the thing. Perfect church. Ganda. However, ito na. But, however, the perfect church quickly began to break down. Acts chapter 6 verse 1. There are dalawang sides ito eh. Acts chapter 6 verse 1. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, they were rumblings of discontent. Ayan na. Sa isang church pala, pag lumalago, pag lumalaki, nagkakaroon ng discontent. Nagkakaroon ng, yung sinasabi mo kanina, mismanagement. And what we mismanage, we lose. And what we mismanage, they crumble down. Here's the thing. Sabi nila, nagre-reklamo yung mga widows. Management. Kuya Manny, kung nandito pa si Kuya Manny, no? Kuya Manny. Hindi na kami pinapakain. Puro na lang preaching, preaching, preaching. Paano na may mga widows? And then, they prayed, they appointed spiritual deacons and elders. May pitong nilagay doon, pinangunan ni Stephen, at yun, nagkaroon ng kaayusan. Here's the thing. Pag lumalaki ang church, lumalaki din ang responsibilities. Pag lumalaki ang responsibilities, kailangan natin ng mga maraming responsible. Nagkakaroon ng problema ang isang church 
kapag sinasabi natin, ang laki ng church natin, pero dapat ako lang, ang bida dito. No, we have to multiply our leaders. We have to appoint na kalagay doon, spiritual, knowledgeable, and credible. Ang problema, nag kapag lumalaki ang church, pero walang napuproduce na leaders. Much is given, much is required. Kaya may mga nadidisappoint. Bakit ganito naman? Bakit ganyan? Bakit yung kapite yun? Tagal nilang mag-serve ng pansit kanton. Luluto na nga lang, hindi pa ma-serve ng maayos. Malata pa yung kanin na binigay sa akin with Shanghai. That's why we need to hire. Kasi lumalaki. Imagine nyo. Imagine nyo, ididi group ko kayo everyday. Ala, mapapanot naman ako agad. Tumataas na nga eh, di ba? Kakaisip. Isipin ko pa lang si JP, tsaka si Glenn, tsaka si Gerald. Na-stress na ako. How much more kayong lahat? That's why we produce leaders. We produce D-group leaders. Oh, musta yung D-group mo, Jed? Engineer. Okay naman po. Okay, ikaw nang bahala dyan. I'll train you to train others. Pag lumalaki ang church, lumalaki ang responsibilidad. Kaya, guys, hindi, hindi rin ganun kasaya pag malaki ang church. Masaya na hindi masaya. Masaya na mahirap. But praise be to God, our vision is to extend so that we will reach campuses and communities and clans and corporates. So, remember this, disappointments are a part of the church community. At gusto kong sabihin at malaman ninyo to, yung mga ina-expect natin na mangyayari sa church ay madalas malayo sa katotohanan. Ulitin ko, yung ina-expect natin, madalas na mangyayari sa church, ay madalas malayo sa katotohanan. Illustration. Pag malit ang church mo, malit pa naman yung church natin eh. Ang ina-expect natin at ang pinag-pray natin, of course, we're longing for the best and we are dreaming for a great building and facilities. Nothing wrong about that. Gusto natin lumaki. Pastor, Grabe, malululan natin doon. One seven, punong-puno yun. Here's the thing. Gusto mo nang malaki, hindi ka naman marunong mag-disciple, hindi ka pa nag-disciple. Sino, sino mag-disciple noon? TV shop. Disciple niya yung dalawang libong youth. Ito, we're praying for great facilities. Mag-pray natin, magandang drums, maganda yung talkback natin. Here's the thing. Hindi mo nga maalagaan at mapunasan. Pag pinagpapalat, lumalaki tayo, may kaakibat na responsibilidad. Yes. Ang hindi mapagkakatiwalaan sa maliit, hindi mapagkakatiwalaan sa malaki. Gusto ko sumikat kami. Gusto ko maging ano ko, kagaya ako ni Pastor Stephen Prado o ni Stephen Pertic. Eh, ano-ano naman yung mga sineshare mo sa online? Hugot ni Bex. Hugot ni Be... Di ba? <laughs> Tignan mo, madulas. Here's the thing. Kapag malaking church, akala niyo ba masaya ang malaking church? Pag malaking church, ito ang nilolong niyo na. Sana naman mapansin na ako ni Pastor. Imagine mo kung 36,000 ang membro mo. Ika-counseling mo yun everyday. Lutang ka na, men. Kaya nga, ito pa problema, hindi mo na nga mamit. Ang dami pa mga leaders, for sure, hindi mo rin namimit lahat ng mga leaders eh. Kasi sobrang laki na. Imagine that. Sana mapansin ako ni Pastor. Sana maministeran ako ni ganito. Ang good kasi nung nag a kanina. Pero ang dami na. Some of them stress na sa manage kasi ang laki. Look at this. Gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo that there's no perfect church. Disappointments are expected and part of that church community. And maganda sabi ni Eugene Peterson, nag-email siya sa akin. Sabi niya sa akin, The church we want is the enemy of the church we have. Because our ideally, uh, idealized Christian community is often far from reality. Yeah. And sticking on the shortcomings of our churches will only lead to constant disappointment and division. Kaya maganda nga yung, yung preaching eh. Kapag nasaktan tayo or kapag na-offend tayo, lilipat na lang ako sa ibang church. Buti pa doon, hindi ako na-offend. Meron bang ganun? 
Lahat tayo na offend. Lahat tayo na hurt. Na, na hurt at na, na alam nyo na, na, na nabibigyan ng disappointment. Because sometimes we're so idealistic. Nakalimutan na natin yung realistic. Tingin natin sa church, tapat ganito, perfect. Sino dito nakakita ng perfect church? Every church, they have weaknesses. They have their own disappointments. Expectation kay pastor, dapat si pastor naman. Siyempre, shepherd ko siya eh. Dapat libre niya rin ako. Dapat ako yung sasakay niya sa kotse. Sama niya rin ako sa ganito. Tapos expect din natin naman kay member, dapat member to, dapat mahalin nila si pastor, ipag-birthday nila si pastor. We have those expectations. And remember this, the more you expect, the more it hurts. Ang magandang expectation natin ay sa Panginoon. When we serve God, He uses people. Because when you seek God, first, all these things will be blessed and be added unto you. Here's the question. Is that what God wants or what you want? Every time na pumupunta tayo sa church, yun bang sinasabi ng Panginoon na gawin natin? Or ito lang ang gusto nating gawin kasi gusto natin? Or is that the right thing to do or is it the righteous thing to do? That's the right thing to do! Because I want it. But it's not, that's not righteousness because that's not what God said you to do. Diba? At ang sukatan ng isang malakas na simbahan na hindi perfection, kundi progression. Marami nagsasabi, ako mature na akong Christian. Sino nakarinig na po nun? I hope wala pong magtaas ng kamay ha? Even me, I'm not a mature Christian. I'm a maturing Christian, pwede pa yun. I'm, I'm not... A, a grown Christian. Maybe I'm a growing Christian. Ang tanong kasi natin, ako mature na ako, pastor. Ang tanong, kung mature ka talaga, kamukha mo na ba talaga si Kristo? Look at this, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Until we attain to the unity of the faith and end of knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Here's the thing. There's no such thing as mature Christian. But maturing Christian meron. Kasi pag nangyari ito na mature ka na, Van, ibig sabihin, darating na si Lord. Glorified body ka na. At kapag nagsama-sama ng buong simbahan, at sabi dito, unit united in faith. There's no such thing as, as, as unity in faith. Pa? Bakit kapag nangyari ang unity of faith, we're praying for unity of course. But kapag nagkaroon na ng unity of faith, ang victory, ang Jael, ang, ang Bethany, ang, ang ICC, darating na si Lord. Kaya in verse 3, sabi doon, eager to maintain only the unity, the abundant peace. Kapag naging united na kay Kristo ang buong simbahan, darating na si Lord. So ngayon, sino magsasabing mature ng Christian siya? Mature na ako, pakinggan mo ako. There's no such thing as mature Christian. Maturing Christian, yes, it is. Also, a community that cannot bear one another's weaknesses, we lose the promise of being a durable Christian community. Alam nyo, ang isang simbahan, kung bakit tumatagal, hindi dahil perfect. Kala nyo ba, tumatagal ang isang simbahan? Kasi grabe, ang perfect nila, napaka-ideal nila, ang galing nila. Hindi, lahat may struggle. Pero tumatagal lang isang simbahan, kapag may sense na, I know the love of Jesus, his finished work, at merong patawaran. At tingin nyo ba, ilang beses na kami nagpatawaran ni Kuya JP? Baka, may get 100 na. Pero because we love one another, may patawaran at doon tayo tumatagal bro. Una ako siyang nakasama na, na, na full-time worker as youth. 2016. Hanggang 2020. Seven years na bro. Happy, ma, happy anniversary. <laughs> Tingin nyo, kung di kami nagpapatawalan ni Kuya JP, aba, first year pa lang, lagi na open dyan. <laughs> Aalis na yan. Lagi na open sa akin, ganito, ganito. Pero mamaya, lalapitan ko siya. Or siya yung lalapit sa akin, usap kami. Doon tumatagal. Sabi rin sa Galatians 6.1, to brothers, 
If anyone is caught in any transgression, who you are spiritual so should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watching yourself, lest you to be tempted, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Kung sino yung mas nakakaintindi at may spiritual daw, ibig sabihin yung parang mas nakatatanda, sila yung lumapit. Hey bro, uh, correct lang kita sa part nito, gentle. Nagtatagal ang church kasi alam natin yung love ni Lord. Pinatawad lang naman ako, bakit hindi ako magpapatawad? Tumatagal ang simbahan kapag may kapatawaran. At may patawaran, at kung may patawaran sa pamilya, mas masaya. Pastoral team, ilang beses sa akin nagtampo yung mga yan. But I always reach out. Sila Glenn, Diyos ko, kung di ko pinatawad yan. Sila Charles, sila Eman, baka nag-step down na akong pastor. Eh, ako na! Yung ako na sa church ito. Di ba? Na-offend nila ako. No. But we bear one another's bur- we, we bear one another's burdens. Yung problema, pare, wala kang pang-enroll. Danny, samaan kita sa CIT, kunin natin. Burden ko yun eh. Ngayon, nakapag-enroll na sa TSU. We, we carry each burden. Say, bro, dapat kang makapag-aral. Kung di ka mag-aaral, isipin po kita. Kaya naman mag-aaral. Di ba? O, oh, pag inisip kita, hindi ka nakapag-aaral, isipin pa kita nga. Di ba? Pasok pa utang, wala akong pang ano. But, you know, we think of other people. Dami kasi tayong idealistic pero hindi realistic idea of a strong church. Kaya masyado tayong idealistic sa church tendencies to run from one place to another. Tama yung sinabi ni Pastor Stephen. Sometimes, tinitignan natin ang church as restaurant. Customers are always right. Pag bubuksan ka ng pinto, pasok po kayo. Yung upuan, yakanda sa'yo. Order please, kapag nagkamali, pwede kang magalit. Pero sa church, no. Ikaw ang naglilingkod. Ikaw ang, imagine nyo, naglingkod na kayo. Nag-tights pa kayo, nagbigay pa kayo. Nanlibre pa kayo ng leader nyo. Sa church, we are trained to be servant leaders. Even Jesus came not to be served, but to serve other people. So, we're not a restaurant. At sa isang simbahan, tayo isang pamilya. Di ba pag sa isang pamilya, hindi na tayo nahiya, pero may respeto. Pari, puno mo na to. Pero we love them. Pero sa ano, parang, ang prim proper, ang prim and proper. One steak. Bakit? Ayaw mo magkamali. At pag pinag-serve, dahan-dahan, sir, this is your order. Thank you for waiting. But sa dito sa simbahan, tayo ang naglilingkod. Tayo ang nagbibigay. Tayo ang umiintindi. Because we, we, we bear one another's burden. Minsan gusto natin tayong minamahal lagi. Siguro this is the time tayo naman na magmahal. Tayong pinaglilingkuran ngayon, tayo naman maglingkod. Dati tayo ang tinetext. Ngayon tayo naman naman text ng iba. Gusto mo lagi ka hindi na ako tinetext ni Pastor. Mukhang di na niya ako love. Nanlalamig na siya. Di ba? Ba't na nanlalamig? Kung naman, di ka nang tinetext eh. Love kita. Buti na lang. Kaya sabi ko, yung omniscience ng Panginoon, it's not frightening. It's a blessing. Omniscience means, alam ng Panginoon. He knows everything. Buti na lang, may omniscience. It's a blessing. Kasi even though our love for others is not being demonstrated, alam ni Lord na mahal natin ang bawat isa. That's the good thing about God knowing everything. We must love the Christian community itself rather than the love of our dream Christian community. Let me explain this. Misa kasi parang ganito, ang gusto ko talaga mangyari sa church ito, lumaki, campus, gusto ko makapag-plant tayo ng mga churches, makapag-raise tayo ng pastor, ng mga leaders, but we forget the people who are here. Dapat mahalin natin yung sarili nating Christian community kaysa yung dream natin. Ang gusto ko talaga, yung maging ganito tayo. Here's the thing. Kapag mas mahal natin ang dream natin for Christian community than our actual Christian community, we're actually destroying it. Bakit? Gusto ko ganito tayo niyan. 
Paano naman yung ngayon? Gusto ko, abutin natin sila. Paano naman yung nandito ngayon? Ang dami natin dreams. Gusto ko talaga, pastor, ang church natin, ganito. Hindi. Ayusin muna natin yung nandito. Hindi pa nga natin maayos eh. It's not wrong to dream for our Christian community, but we have to love the actual Christian community right now. Kaya ang tanong natin ngayon, mga kapatid, it's not about how are you. The question today, sa sakatabi mo ngayon, how are you loving the people God in store in your life? Kasi pag sinabi mong, how are you, JP? I'm okay. Pero tanungin mo to, kamusta yung disciple mong nakasakit sa'yo lately? Hirap. That's the question. How are you loving the people in store? God in store in your life. Because you know, Christian life is a battle. Pag naging Christiano po kayo, hindi po magiging smooth ang buhay ninyo. In fact, you will be persecuted. But blessed are the persecuted for righteousness because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Number three, experiencing a sense of awe. Experiencing a sense of awe. In verse 43, a deep sense of awe came over all them them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. You know, the Greek text translated awe here is meaning phobos. I want you to underline the word awe. Sabi nyo nga awe. 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 Ibig sabi ng awe is phobos. Dito nakuha yung phobia. Pag, pag meron kang takot sa pagligo, hydrophobia. Hydrophobos. But if you love uh, being in the water, hydrophilic. So, it means a fear deep in the soul or terror, fight, be afraid. Now, here's the thing. Pastor, nag-fellowship lang sila kanina. Bakit may verse na ito? A deep sense of terror. A deep sense of fright and afraid. Bakit po, Pastor? You know, gaya nga nang sabi ko kanina, if we believe discipleship is a fight that we must engage Dapat may times na nakakatakot talaga. Yung oh, oh ibig sabihin, yung ibig sabihin ng oh is frightening. Oh, di ba? Oh. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> nyo naman na-gets eh. <laughs> ah, here's the thing. Gets nyo naman, di ba? Pinag-pray ko na kayo eh. <laughs> so, for example, I-, I want to give you an example. For example, sa PMA, may nag-PMA ba dito? Gusto mag-PMA? Sa mga PMA, may mga training yan. Yung mga bakbakan, kunwari, between may mga blank bullets at saka mga live ammunitions. Yung mga blank bullets, meron kang ganun, of course, bakbakan to, dapat manalo ko. Motivated ka, gusto mo mag-succeed, at dapat ako yung maging champion dito. Pero, here's the thing, hindi ganun ka taas yung adrenaline rush. Bakit? Kasi hindi naman ganon nakataya yung buhay mo. Hindi naman ako mamatay dito, kaya sugod lang sugod. Pero kapag live na yun, iba na. And during this time, ang mga Kristiyano, kaya they felt a sense of awe kasi hindi ito theoretical. Practical na ito. They're being persecuted. They're being stoned to death. Kaya ang ginagawa na, tulong tayo for the mission. Kaya every time they're helping the people, they felt a sense of, oh, grabe, grabe. Sige, tulong pa tayo, tulong pa tayo. Galingan natin for the Lord, for the mission. That's why in verse 44 and 45, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Pastor, grabe, it blew me away. Amazing. I- I'm feeling a sense of awe right now. I'm amazed. But I want you to know this. The true feeling is expressed in our actions. What we do to show our awe. Yes. Alam nyo kung bakit sila naka-experience ng awe? Kasi talagang pinipersecute sila. Still, they are helping one another. Sa mga campuses, alam mong they're committing suicide. Yung iba... Some of them, broken family, but 
Lord, every time na meron kami na dadala dito sa sa D group sa church nakakarinig, we feel sense of oh, wow, amazing Lord, amazing. First century Christianity, despite of persecutions, they meet together. Hindi ba amazing yon? 21st century Christianity, ginader na lahat. Promotions, nilibre mo na. Ang dami pa rin dahilan. Kaya sila sobra, wow! Yung meeting together, that is a miracle. Kasi ngayon, ang nakakalungkot po, listen up to me, the emphasis today and what excites us is who is the preacher or maybe sinong bandang tutugtog. Tama? But remember this, the right atmosphere, good music, and a charismatic worship leader cannot fix the deep spiritual problems of the heart. It's about Jesus. Kasi alam nyo, kung right atmosphere lang ang hinahanap natin sa isang simbahan para tayo magbago, matagal na sana tayo nagbago. At ang una sana nagbago ang worship team. At si pastor. Kasi sigaw na sigaw si pastor eh. Kinilibutan ako kay pastor. Kinilibutan ako sa worship team. But that won't change you. If the focus of worship is meeting our needs as consumers, we will not experience the awe and the fear of the Lord that leads to authentic change and true obedience. Kasi kung itong basihan natin para tayo lahat magbago, di sana lahat tayo nagbago na kasi kinalabutan tayo last week. Grabe mag-preach yung ano, Grabe magpatugtog at umawit yung mga Tipenwide United Worship. And sadly, many people determine a church's effectiveness by how they think their needs are met and the way they feel emotionally about the worship service. Guys, itong gawin natin, papaiyakin natin sila para magbago sila. Pero hindi lahat ng umiyak ay nagbabago. Yeah. Hindi lahat ng sumisigo at tumatalo nagbabago. Baka na-hype lang at na-emotion lang. Because true worship is about, you know, true worship is being seen how we live it out. And it's uh, true worship and duly worship is being seen how we live it out. Remember this, we cannot make disciples by creating worship environments that cater to people's felt needs. Alam nyo ba ang worship? Itong pagkanta natin ngayon, marami, ang worship kasi talaga, sabi ko sa inyo, is all about obedience. Akala natin ang worship is yung tugtugan at kantahan. Ang ganda yung sabi ni Glenn kanina, worship is just a tool to express our gratitude to God. Hindi ito actually naglilid, grado ng worship. Na pre, kasi bago ka mag-worship, may nangyari na sa'yo. You cannot worship kung wala pang nangyayari sa'yo. I'm going to worship the Lord through songs, kasi grabe, pinagpala niya ako, blinis niya yung pamilya ko, nakapasa ako sa ganito, kung loud ako, that's why, I'm going to express my gratitude through songs. But the songs will not change us. That's not true worship. There are times, nakakalungkot po, there are times we do it for applause, not for worship. I've seen a lot of churches gumagamit ng mga dried eyes para lang sa usok-usok. Bakit kailangan pa nun? Para lang pumalak, oh, grabe, may usok dito, kinikilibutan ako, grabe, 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 grabe. If you're doing that for applause, don't do it. Because you can actually worship the Lord without dry eyes, fake smoke. Why we're buying this 91,000 worth na drums? Para pag nakita na, astig, maganda yung palo ko at gumanda ang church para palakpakan ako kasi magaling ako mag-drums. If you're thinking of that, don't buy that kind of drums. Bakit? Ang tunay na worship is there's a connection between you and God. God, I obey you, I trust you, and I'm so grateful for what you've done in my life. Doon lumalabas yung worship. Grateful ka ba this morning kaya ka kumanta kanina ng Build Your Church? Or ang ganda lang ng music at ang ganda ng tugtugan kanina kaya ka kumakanta? We are singing because we express our gratitude, gratefulness to God. Psalm 147.1 Praise the Lord. 
how good to sing praises to our God, how delightful and how fitting. The quality of our worship, our awe of God and what He has done will be most evident in the life we live. Kapag ba wala ng banda, hindi na tayo makakapag-worship? Kapag ba nagdi-devotion tayo sa bahay natin at walang magpipreach sa'yo, hindi ka na tatayo ng, Amen! Preach it! Preach it! Or napapatayo ka pa rin during your devotion. <laughs> you know, every time, gusto ko sabihin sa inyo to, mas gusto ko yung preparation kaysa sa, de- sa proclamation. Every time I prepare my message, ang pinaka-favorite part ko yung preparation ko. Every time I'm reading the Bible, talagang literal, tumatayo ako. Sa bahay namin, alam, krabi, krabi, Lord, sa'yo, Jotel. Pag-isa ko lang sa bahay, di ba? Kaya yung, yung pusa ko. Anong dito? Akala nga nabubuwang na ako, pero there's a sense of awe. God! Who am I to be called by you? Ha! Tapos na pag connect connect mo lahat yung dots, grabe Lord! Grabe! Kaya pagdating mo sa church, excited ka eh. Tapos yung congregation, amen. Amen. Preaching is a two-way communication. The pastor has to be prepared and also the congregation has to be prepared. Kaya ang hirap minsan mag-amen at ang hirap minsan sumunod. Hmm? Minsan sabi niya, sense of awe. A life of worship is a life of sacrificial discipleship, giving ourselves as a living sacrifice offering to God. Last one, are you still there? Mabilis na lang to. Two weeks lang to, kaya hinabaan ko na. Sulit. Last one, growing in numbers. Growing in numbers. Makikita mo ang isang church na lumalago, nag-grow din in numbers. Hindi lang sa faithfulness. Because faithfulness produces fruitfulness. Hindi mo masasabi na faithful ang isang tao kung wala kang nakikitang fruit, fruits. At sasabihin mo, grabe, fruitful ako, pero hindi naman sila faithful. Deep pero hindi wide. Wide pero hindi deep. Kaya nga deep and wide. How do you measure success? Do you quantify your results? Binibilang ba natin? Sometimes, yes. Pero maganda yung sinabi ni Albert Einstein. Sabi niya, not everything that can be counted counts. And not everything that counts can be counted. Sa Tagalog, hindi lahat ng marami ay counted at masaya. Hindi rin lahat ng konti ay ibig sabihin failure o malungkot. Meron mga konti pero faithful that will result to fruitfulness. Meron naman marami daw pero one inch deep. Pag pinag ng ganito, ano naman yan? Kasi hindi rooted. And what happened to the early church as it followed to the apostles' teaching, engage in fellowship, and live in awe of God through la- la- uh, uh, through lives of, con- uh, lives of constant worship is this in verse 47. All the while, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people and each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Look at this. Merong apostle teaching, may fellowship, may right worship, and it resulted numbers and members. Each day, ibig sabihin, hindi lang every Sunday, but every day. This talks about discipleship. Everyday discipleship. Walang nakalagay, every Sunday in the temple. No. Each day in the temple and in their house. That talks about discipleship, the groups. And verse 4 of Acts chapter 4, but many of the people who heard their message believed it so the number of men who believed now total about 5,000 so the early Christian church became a mega church more or less 8,000 to 10,000 members hindi pa kasama yung kids service nila Lorden hindi pa kasama yung women's ministry nila hindi pa kasama yung youth ministry nila deep and wide worship men alone ang solid why? because there was Apostle teaching, there was fellowship and right worship. Pero alam nyo po ba, as I end, I want to challenge you. Let me end this. 
Pero alam niyo po ba, kung kaya nila, mas kaya natin. Sino na diniwala na mas kaya natin? Sino na diniwala na mas kaya natin? Look at this, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8. Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. And the patient spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So, ibig sabihin, kung kaya nang simula, mas matindi ang gagawin ng Panginoon sa dulo. Bakit mas masarap ang alak na ginawa ng Panginoon nung ika-seventh day kaysa sa first day? Because ang Panginoon, alam niya, He is waiting for the right time. Why Jesus said, John 14, 12, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than this will do. Because I'm going to the Father. Why would the greater works come after Jesus ascended to heaven? Na kung kailan umalis si Jesus, mas matindi ang gagawin ninyo kaysa sa ginawa ko. You know why? Because God always saves the best for last. Sino dito papayag na mas malupit ang first Christianity church? Kaysa sa 21st Christianity church. Mga kapatid, mas malupit ang gagawin sa atin ng Panginoon. We have the program. We have technologies. Sila wala sila noon. You know what? Kung ano meron lang sila noon is the passion. We have programs. We have people. We have properties. One thing is lacking is the passion. But I believe kung kaya nila, mas kaya natin. Papayag ba tayo ng simbahan habang tumatagal pasuyot ng pasuyot? Hindi. Dapat habang patagal ng patagal, mas lumalakas at mas dumarami. Ngayon, I want to ask you this question. During their time, maraming pinagaling. Maraming naligtas. Ngayon bang era natin, there are 8 billion people in the world. Maraming bang may sakit? Maraming bang hindi kilala si Kristo? Then that's the time na mas marami tayong i-harvest, pagagalingin, i-enrich, encourage. Dahil mas maraming tao ngayon, if they did it, we can do it as well. Because God always saves the best for last. The church becomes stronger when they're in one accord. That's why I preach this. God, God impressed me, hey, preach about the church and talked about the other people. That's why I want to invite you to please all rise. What is our calling, Lord? To love your church and to reach your people, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. We thank you, Lord, for today's service, for today's sermon, Lord. Thank you if they come first century church, Lord, ay kinaya nila mas kakayanan namin, Panginoon. Wow. Pwede bang hawakan mo yung kamay ng katabi mo ngayon? Please, hold it right now. Hold it, hold it. Hold it. Dahil yung taong kahawak mo ngayon, yan ang makakasama mo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Yung kasama mo ngayon at hawak mo ngayon, yan ang magbleblas sa iyo kapag lugmok ka. Yan ang magpapatawad sa iyo Yan ang mag-drug sa'yo kapag medyo lumilihis ka na. And the people that you're holding right now, ang gagamitin ng Panginoon na makakasama to build this church. To build this church. That's why God, I pray that this church of Bethany, the ministry of deep and wide, Panginoon, ay gagamitin nyo to reach out the people. And we will be used, God, to build your church, Lord. That we will love your church. We will love you, Panginoon, but also your church. That, Lord, yes, there are disappointments. But, God, we will weather it through. We will overcome those disappointments and delusionals, Lord. Because we have this flock of Bethany. We have this church of Bethany. We have this 
person standing next to me. Nakapag kami may burden, kasama ko siyang dadali dito, God. We're going to do it extra mile, Lord. In Jesus' name. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah.